Statistical inference is the art of using data to create wisdom. The mission is to use the correct statistical methodology such that the conclusion is accurate. Next, let's discuss the real value of statistics. The acronym DIKW refers to the migration path of data to wisdom. You start with data, then process that into information, continue to use the information to generate knowledge, and lastly, to attain wisdom. Let's look at a simple example. Let's say you have a classroom of 30 students and you want to find the average height. By measuring the height of everyone in the class, you now have a set of data. You don't have information yet. There are statistical tests that will tell you whether or not you are mixing two different populations. In this example, male students are significantly taller and comprise a different statistical group than female students. Next, you collect the average height of all the males in one group and females in another group. Now you have information. Since the students are adults, you assume that their height has become fixed. You would like to apply what you've learned with the students to all individuals in the nation. This means that you would like to use the information you collected as a sample for the whole population. This gives you knowledge regarding the whole population. As you go through this process, you are gaining wisdom. You may say to yourself that the ethnic representation of the class does not match the ethnic representation of the general population. The next decision might be to measure the height of a sample of individuals in the general population at a ratio that matches the ethnic representation. Take that average and compare it to the student average. You've now gotten yourself into an area of complexity that you may not realize. You cannot just measure means of two populations and come to a conclusion about whether they are part of the same population. There are specific statistical tests you use to perform that. I discuss statistical pitfalls next. Building a robust plan can both be the hardest and the most important thing to do. There are statistical tests you perform if your distribution is normal and others you perform if the distribution is not normal. You can both view a distribution to determine normalcy or you can perform a statistical test to determine if the distribution is normal. You can take any data that you've collected and run it through any statistical test to come up with an answer. That is not the challenge. The challenge is to determine the correct statistical test so the answer has relevance. Don't argue with the data. Data is data. Arbitrarily altering data because it doesn't look right is not statistically valid. If you are doing a statistical test, like I mentioned before, on all the students in the class, you don't have to worry about randomness. However, if you are selecting students for measurement that you're going to use to infer population characteristics, then you must select students randomly. Anytime you're going to select a sample to derive population characteristics, the sample must be random. If I am selecting a sample and parts of it become contaminated, and the contamination is not random, but deliberate, then that contaminated sample must be removed. Every statistical process includes a test. You start by selecting your null hypothesis and use that to conclude statistical characteristics regarding your sample. The sample must be random and the statistical test must be accurate. Let's discuss what sort of decisions you will need to make. The whole point of your statistical effort is to validate the null hypothesis. This is based on the idea that any variation you see is by chance. The alternate hypothesis covers everything else. The alternate hypothesis covers the case when statistics are significantly separate. For normally distributed data, there are a plethora of statistical tests designed just for this. These statistical tests are called parametric. If the distribution is not normally distributed, then you use a suite of statistical tests called non-parametric. So is your distribution normal or not? If you're going to just look at the data to determine if it's normal, then compare that distribution of that data to a normal distribution. Some distributions will look normal, but they're not. Another way to do this is to perform the Anderson-Darling normality test. This statistically tests normality. Descriptive statistics are statistics that are based on measuring a whole population. Often that is not possible, and in that case you would use inferential statistics. That use a random sample to determine characteristics about a population. It should be clear which type of statistics to use. It's good to have an idea about the size of the sample or population that you will be measuring. As sample sizes increase, the confidence in the results accuracy increases. We see this often in political polls. If your poll is plus or minus 4% and your candidates are within 3% of each other, then the political poll did not test enough people. The cost of doing a statistical test includes the operational cost and the reputational cost. I would highly recommend that you engage either a statistician or a black belt to validate your effort. This will save you money and reputation in the long run. The more effort you put into a plan, the better off you will be. 
Winging it only leads to problems. A black belt or statistician can help make sure that there is an alignment between the data and the conclusion you're trying to make. It is important that data selection is randomized. At first glance, you should never discard any data. If you're not happy with an extreme data point, then select a larger sample size, but don't throw away that data point. Lastly, let's overview some examples and questions. The point of this slide is not to go through every test, since there are many, many more than this, but just to demonstrate the wide variation of possible statistics to use. Some statistics test for central tendency, such as mean, mode, and median. Others test for variations, such as standard deviation and range. In an example problem, you may need to test how likely it is that the sample mean represents the population mean. In a situation like this, you care much more about the population than the sample. Kappa analysis is used to test the consistency of people that rate things and then distribute them into mutually exclusive categories. The question the test answers is whether all people are using the same rating metrics. ANOVA helps you determine whether three or more means of three or more different samples are all from the same population. ANOVA gauge R&R is used to test variance in the measurement system. A measurement system example could simply be reading a thermometer. If one person reads a thermometer at eye level, one looks down a little bit, and one looks up a little bit at it, there could be error in your measurement system. This is a very short representation of some of the many statistical tests that are available to anybody using statistics. Statistics takes you from data to information to knowledge and finally to wisdom. I'll give you one example of a statistical mistake that a major car manufacturer made. They set a variance limitation on ball bearing diameters, which they were manufacturing. They met the variance limitation, but their ball bearing diameters were not randomly distributed around the desired mean within that variation. This caused situations when ball bearings with similar diameters were stacked together, adding up the errors and resulting in transmission failures. This was a failure in wisdom. Statistics are termed sadistics. Any test will always give you an answer, right or wrong, causing many failed conclusions. Get somebody involved that really knows the breadth of statistical tests and use cases for statistics. Statistics are used to evaluate tests. The plan needs to include the goal, the sample, the test size, the null hypothesis, the statistical test, and other things. The time spent planning should represent a significant part of the total time. I've read that statistics used by doctors in a significant amount of studies were wrong. They may have used the wrong statistics, but they got an answer anyway. The risk to people that rely on their studies is that they are led to a wrong conclusion. There are a breadth of statistical methodologies available. Use the right one the right way and you will be successful. I am Jim Fitzgerald, a Lean Six Sigma Master Black Belt and an expert on building your production system using the tools of Toyota. Good luck on your journey from data to wisdom. So many businesses would like to be at Six Sigma. Toyota is at least a Six Sigma company. Use their tools to move towards excellence. 60 days of planning, 20 steps of execution, and 20 questions to answer.